Michael, you brought a flow chart about your morning procedures. Can you tell me about that? Um, yes, I, yes, I can. Well, first we enter the classroom at the beginning of the day. Um, then we ask you if you did, if you have a backpack. Uh, um, if yes, you unpack back the backpack and hang it up. Uh, then you go on to the beginning and now. Yeah. Put name up for lunch, sign in, sit down on log and, and then sit down on the log and focus on the calendar. And we're, um, this was much probably going to put a line here so you know what to do after yes. Opposite, like this chart. Very good. Now, why did you all think that you needed a flow chart for the morning? Well... Well, because we didn't really know what to do at the beginning of the day. Like, like first we just sat down on rug, then we just forgot to put up our name up for lunch. But then we also forgot to sign in. And we just left our backpacks on the floor. So using a flow chart really helped you to and get things messing, done in the morning. And you were messing around on the on the rug and you didn't focus on the calendar. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes we had to, we forgot that to put our book bags away, we didn't, we thought it wasn't even on our back when it was. Okay. Now, Scott, I think you've also brought a control chart. Yeah. Can you tell us about the control chart that you brought? Um, we were, um, had, we needed this, um, chart right here because, uh, our time was too long at work activity, so we had to get the control chart to, because so, while we were going in line at PE, big cleanup had to still be in the room. Too long, and our highest minute of time was nine. And a half. And we, yeah, nine and a half. And then we, we, got, we started at eight, and our lowest time was two minutes, I think, unless that's a one. Sure. And so all those numbers tell how long it took you to yeah. clean up? If there's two, and then this line, one, two, or like four, that means like we had two and a half if it was two, and then one, one line, two, right there. Scott, the how did you feel about this day? Mmm, bad. Why was that a bad day? Because uh, we don't like our time to be up high, we like it to be low. Okay. Usually we like it to be here, but mostly we want it on the dotted line, or we want it under. Not like right here, but it's and okay. And this. Yeah, and this. What and does it mean? And you want near bottom. What does it mean when it's on the dotted line or close to the dotted line? Or under. Um, that means we're doing good. If we're under here, we're out of control, but good out of control. Okay. And. And what if you had a dot way up here? We would be out of control if it. If we had to put a dot right up at the top, we would be out of control. That might have took us the whole rest of the day if we did after. If we did it on work activity, it would take us the whole rest of the day up there. It sure would. Now, Scott, I understand that you've also written a book that you want to share with us about control charts. Why don't you turn around and face the camera and share your book? Uh, we had to make a control chart because we took too long at cleaning up. All right, and then I got mostly pictures. Each one means like the M is hiding under there. M, T means each one, but then it, after M, T, or the, I can't, well, when we go back to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the other T that's not after the M, that means Thursday, then Friday, and then we go back to Monday. Okay. Um, and then this is another one. There's one. We had one that wasn't a dotted line. The other one was a dotted line. Is it important to the boys and girls in your class that you not get out of control and that you stay yep. within these yep. control limits? Yep. Yep, it is. Well, thank you for sharing, Michael and Scott.